Hello, this is Molly Anholm, and welcome to 3 Minute Threads, art history talks that last, well, usually a little over 3 minutes. Today's topic is the famous 13th century Chan Buddhist painting titled Six Persimmons by the artist Muqi Fa Chong. Muqi lived during the Southern Song Dynasty in China. His death in 1269 came just one decade before the collapse of the Southern Song Dynasty to the invading forces of the fierce and ever-expanding Mongolian Empire. There are no signs of this tumultuous period, however, in this painting. Instead, it is a nearly transcendental depiction of the most seemingly mundane of subject matter, six persimmons. Typical of Chan Buddhist painting, this is created in the monochromatic style with black ink on paper. Chan painting could be found in a variety of formats, including hanging scrolls, hand scrolls, album leaves, fans, and folding screens. This example, which measures about 15 by 14 inches, is the typical size of an album leaf page, though this beloved painting, as we see, has been mounted on silk. So let's take a moment to take a look and consider the subject. There are six pieces a fruit, painted on an unpainted ground. The surface is slightly mottled. Not a single brushwork is out of place or excessive to the subject as hand. Some compare the stem of the persimmons with the calligraphic style of Chinese characters. And there was, in fact, a long-standing relationship between painting and calligraphy in China. Both use the same primary tools, the brush and the ink, and they're often integrated together with lines of poetry accompanying the painted image. Historically, these three arts, painting, poetry, and calligraphy, were known as the three perfections. But back to Muchi's painting, why persimmons? And why paint fruit that would appear quite similar in real life in such a variety of tonal values? Well, I have read that in Buddhist art, the symbol of the persimmon represents the idea of transformation as the fruit is extremely sour before ripening, but renowned for its sweet flavor when fully ripe, and therefore represents the transformation from bitter ignorance to sweet enlightenment. This might remind you of the lotus flower, which in Buddhist art symbolizes enlightenment as the flower takes root in the murky water of the pond, but blooms when reaching the surface. And perhaps the choice of six persimmons relates to the six patriarchs of Zen or Chan Buddhism, from the first patriarch, Bodhidharma, to the sixth, Hui Ning, who famously achieved enlightenment hearing the words of Buddhist scripture spoken while he was chopping bamboo. This was depicted by another famous Buddhist monk and academically trained artist named Liang Kai, seen here. Looking back at the six persimmons, can we be that literal in looking for meaning in a Chan or Zen Buddhist painting? After all, the practice of Zen painting isn't necessarily known for having a strict iconography of symbolism, as we might find with other sects of Buddhist painting. So as we turn back again to this painting, with those six pieces of fruit, ranging in value from light to dark, arranged not on a tree branch or on a tabletop, but against an austere, unpainted ground, we have to ask, what's going on? So we'll turn now for a moment to an essay titled Before and Beyond the Image, Anaconic Symbolism in Buddhist Art, by the author Dietrich Seckel. The idea of anaconic symbolism refers to the artistic practice of using symbols instead of figurative imagery to represent a figure, such as found in really early Buddhist art, where an empty umbrella was sometimes used to suggest the presence of Buddha before the widespread practice of representing Buddha in human form was adopted. In his book, Dietrich Siegel addresses the conundrum between the image and symbol in Zen painting. He writes, To Zen followers, such systems and formula-bound symbolism always remains secondary. Much more important is the immediate contemplation of things themselves, directly opening the eye to the essential. This is why the most important Zen art forms do not show images of holy beings or rigidly defined symbols. Zen art shows us objects in a way based on pure contemplation of the essence, retaining a hovering openness of their meaning. 
In other words, maybe there is no underlying symbolic meaning to these six persimmons that we're trying to uncover as we look at this painting. He continues describing, Zen art often depicts humble things from everyday life, above all taken from nature, the all-encompassing landscape, flowers, stones in the garden, or even some fruit, such as the six persimmons in the famous ink painting by the Chan monk Mu Chi. The empty ground, too, on which the objects are shown, he writes, can be interpreted as an anaconic symbol for the ultimate truth and the absolute essence of being identified with the Buddha and the Buddha nature. In his article, Dietrich Seckel goes on to talk about this conundrum between the possible symbolism in Zen painting and the ultimate goal of Zen painting, which is the non-symbol. But is it really possible to divorce the meaning, to remove the symbolism from the symbol? I'll leave that one to you.